Welcome back. Announcements first. Quiz two is going to open by the end of the lecture and you have all day to complete. So it is due by midnight today. Uh, 10 questions, 20 minutes as usual, a small activity. You do not need a lot of time. Uh, questions, all of them, multiple choice. Just select the correct one. Key topics, the diagrams. It's not about doing diagrams, but about understanding the concepts in the diagrams. Uh, questions about use cases, therefore requirements, functional, non-functional, remember that. Questions about activities, tasks, and obviously elements in the activity diagrams. Questions about states, what is a state, and obviously about state machine diagrams, the notations, events, and so on identify them. And finally, also about cloud diagrams, the topics that we cover in the previous lecture. However, today I am going to insist in some of the same ideas. So cloud diagrams, relationship between classes, requirements, functional, non-functional, the use cases, activity and state diagrams, the task, the state, the details. You've been able to identify those concepts and that is your quiz, 10 questions. Good. Uh, it is not in the lockdown browser, it's a quiz use, as usual uh, on Canvas. Remember for the quizzes, they are open book. So technically you can be in the quiz and you have access to any material that you want to review, but you have only 20 minutes. So my recommendation is review the material before starting the quiz and Good luck. Multiple choice. Good. Moving forward, uh, this week you do not have yet a programming assignment that is coming next week. We need to cover some topics before. So this week, your quiz, that's it. And even though I am going to ask you to program things, it's used in preparation for what is coming. So nothing to submit regarding assignments or programming. Previous lecture, uh, we was talking about class diagram. Basically, I start with this transition from requirements to implementation, and that basically means to identify classes and the connection between classes that we're going to represent with that picture. And from that, we're going to move to programming. So next. Programming, program. Classes, uh, in the classes, something that we told before, and I need to be sure that you can do this. Uh, your classes are rectangles. They should have a name, mandatory, important, relevant, uh, attributes and methods. The most important thing to remember is for attributes and methods, do not forget the access plus or minus, public or private. We're going to be working mostly with that, public, private. Protected is going to be a special case that we're going to use later, but for now, public and private. Key idea, your attributes. Most of them, all of them, usually should be private. It's one of the keys in object-oriented. Hiding information, encapsulation, variables, usually private. So the minus. There are going to be exceptions. We're going to work about when we have an exception, when we have an attribute that is public. They are going to be exceptions. We're going to talk about them. In general, 90% of the time should be private. Methods, well, you should have methods that are public, obviously the interface of the class, but also it is possible to have private methods or protected. It's not a problem. Uh, I think this is the easy part. The complex part, the part that usually create more uh, arguments, the difficult part in your exam, for sure, the relationship between classes. And we reviewed some of them in the previous lecture. We talk about them just to be sure that everything is fine. Uh, this is the list of all the relationships that exist between two classes. If you have two classes and you're going to connect them, you can do 
this. There is no other thing. Association, aggregation, composition, realization, generalization, and specialization. Those are the words that we're going to be using. Those are the words that are going to be in your textbook, in your question in the quiz, the next one, and your exam for sure. Now, all of these are really three categories of relationships. Using or use is exactly the same that association. Having or has split in two subcategories, aggregation, composition, and inheritance or is split in three possibilities, realization, generalization, and specialization. And I just want to be sure that we understand two things. For each of these concepts, number one, the picture in the diagram. How the diagram, the class diagram looks like in order to represent these relationships. And second, what is the source code in Java? The source code equivalent to show this relationship. So we we'll review the first one before. Help me to remember, what is the picture between a class A and a class B? What do I need to do in order to show that class A is associated is using class B. Key idea number one, solid line. There is a solid line between them. That, that is an association. That is an idea of using. Now, please remember, if you do not have arrowhead, the meaning of this without arrowhead is a bidirectional relationship. If you do not put arrowhead, that is equivalent to the picture now. No arrowhead means there are arrowhead to both sides, bidirectional association. What does that mean? That means that A is using B and B is using A. Both things are happening when you do not put the arrows. So, usually we do not want that. So usually we're going to put the arrowhead in one place or in the other. Usually we're going to have something like this. And this, the direction of the arrow, I need you to remember, the arrowhead is pointing to the thing that is being used. So in this case, A is using B. The relationship starts in the class in which the line go out and the relationship ends in the class that have the arrowhead. Programming, what is the meaning of association? What is the meaning of that line with that arrowhead in source code? Two things. Number one, the important is the source code is going to be in the class A. The class A is the one using something. Source code for that diagram, something is going to be in the source code on the class A. I don't care about class B. Class B is the one being used. Second, using or association is about calling a method, exactly. I am going to use the name method. Method in object oriented is a function. So association using class A. One function in class A is calling a function, a method from class B. So probably I have a method here and probably I have a method here and therefore my method here is calling the method in the second class. That is what I am representing in the diagram. Now, I have two options. In order to call the method, well, option number one, the method can be static and I can call the method. 
with the name of the class dot the name of the method if the method is static. If that is the case, if the method is static, something that I need you to remember is in the class diagram, the static methods are going to have a line like that. They are going to have a line that represents static. And the same happened with methods and with variables. If you have a static method or a static variable in your class diagram, they are going to have a line. Uh, you are going to notice this with main. Main is going to have that line because main is static method. So that is one option. The other option is if my method is not static, then in order to call the method, forget about the static, I cannot use the name of the class. What I need is an object. If I need an object, then I need to create the object. I create the object in order to call the method. Something that I need you to remember. Creating an object as a local variable is not aggregation or composition. Aggregation or composition, I am going to move to them. They are about global variables. This object be here as a local variable in whatever method we are using with calling the method, this relationship, even though I am creating an object, this is used an association. This is used using. This is used a line with an arrowhead with lines. With the static, without the static. The only thing here is one method is calling another one, period. That is clear, right? Using association, the source code and the diagram. Moving down. Help me, what is the key element in a class diagram in order to showcase a having association, either composition or aggregation? What is going to be the graphical element that we're going to show in the diagram? And that one represents having, has, and then we can check if it's aggregation or composition, but one graphical element related with these two guys. The diamond, correct. You are going to be here. And the key element that you're going to have is diamonds. And white or black. White is going to be aggregation. Black is going to be composition. Very simple. If you have a diamond, you're talking about a having relationship. Having, having as an aggregation or having as a composition. Two categories of the having relationship. Uh, in terms of the diagram, the diamond should be connected with the class that is the owner. We reviewed this example with car. Car is the class that have the diamond because car is the owner of the wheels or car is the owner of uh, the engine. The owner, the important class, that is the one that have the diamond. So when you look in a class diagram and you check a class and that class have a diamond or more diamonds, it's like that guy is important because that one is going to be complex to implement. That is going to have a lot of things there. Diamonds are relevant. Diamonds help you to identify the important class. So a diamond here to connect A and B. And what I am telling you is the class A is the owner of an object from the class B. The important one, the owner is A. Source code, help me. What is the source code equivalent to a diamond? A variable, an attribute to be specific, a global variable, not a variable inside of a method. As in my previous example, if the variable is local, is inside of a method, that is not composition, that is not aggregation. Composition aggregation, the diamonds are about attributes, global variables. So for instance, in this case, if I have my class A 
and I have this diamond. Having an attribute, uh, if you want private, name of the class, I am using B, name of the object, that line, that global variable, that attribute, that is the translation of the diamond and the line. A has an object B. A is in a relationship with B, and that relationship is associate aggregation or composition. Now, what is the difference? What is the difference between the white diamond and the black diamond? In this example, this is a white diamond. This is the code for the white diamond. You like that. What is the difference? Both are going to be variables. That is not going to change. The only thing is what with the color? Why to use the black? Well, the black diamond is a strong relationship that the white diamond and that strong relationship is going to be connected with the null, correct, thank you. Uh, when you have a diamond and that diamond is black, basically you are telling me that variable cannot be, it won't be null. You're restricting the idea of the null. Uh, this is scenario, this example, it is okay that my diamond is white, that variable X from the class B can be null. In fact, it's null right now, right? I do not have a new for that variable. And if I do not put the new, it's null, it's empty. So that code is 100% representing the class diagram above. Uh, if I put that diamond black, what do I need to do? in order to be sure that that X is never going to be null. And therefore, I am fulfilling what I put in the diagram. Initialize the variable, put a value for the variable. And as you know, put, put values to the variable two places. Uh, number one, you can do the initialization here. You have a variable, but it's not null. And it's never going to be null, unless you make it equal to null. But here, it's going to bore the class A, the object A, with an object inside of class B that is initialized. Obviously, this one is not really a good idea. Uh, talking about programming, uh, this is not the place to put values to your variables. Uh, a better solution with the same results. A constructor, a default constructor. Uh, always, 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 when you create an object A, the default constructor is called it, and the default constructor provides values for your variables. That is the goal of a constructor, right? So never, 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 this attribute is going to be null because the default constructor, the first thing that it's doing is giving a value to the variable. This example is the example with the black diamond. This example is the example for composition. The previous one, the example for aggregation. Good. Tell me, uh, data structures. I am sure that you take a class data structure. And in your data structure class, one of the things that you did was to create a class list, maybe. And that class list, I think, work with a class node. If you remember your classes in that structure, one of the first things that you did was to create node, and then you create maybe list or tree or other fancy things. Yeah, okay. What is the relationship in a class diagram between my class list and my class node? Well, we're talking about having 
uh, aggregation composition. So maybe the option is there. Do I need a diamond? And if so, the diamond is with node or with list? Who has the diamond? List or node? Okay. White or black? I just draw the diamond, so I need to confirm that is correct or I need to put the black. White. Why white? Exactly. Uh, I read before in a comment, the list cannot exist without nodes. However, what is an empty list, right? The nodes can be empty. Uh, the list can be equal to null. Therefore, it's not a composition, it's an aggregation. Is it still a list? But according with your data structure class, if you have a variable list that is equal to null, so that is the case of my list and use, that is still a list without nodes. If that is the case, the, the ammonia is white. Yeah. So why the ammonia? between list and node. In fact, it's going to be the same for every data structure. Rule here, guys. Imagine that you can solve a problem, the same problem, using a black diam, using a white diam, or using association, which basically mean using a local variable. So you can use, you can solve a problem with a global variable that is not null. You can solve the same problem with a global variable that maybe is going to be null sometimes. Or you can solve the same problem, but without global variables, just using locals. And therefore, calling methods from that local variable. Which option is better? Global that are never null, global that could be null, or locals. And I am talking about what is better, composition, aggregation, or association, if you have the three options to solve the same problem. Someone tells you that, right? Do you remember that someone told you that it's better to have local variables than global? In fact, it's a good practice to avoid the global variables if you do not really need them. The best relationship that you can have between two classes is use association. Every single time that you need to connect to classes and you can do that connection, use with association, use with local variables and calling method, that is your best option. Okay, you know what? I really need a global variable. I really need global. What could be better? Global never null or global with the possibilities of null? Again, talking about you can solve the same problem and you can implement any of those options. Uh, what could be better if you're going to use the ammons, the black or the white? The white. The worst thing that can happen between two classes is that you connect those two classes with a black diamond. The black diamond is a very strong relationship. And using a strong relationships is going to uh, make you to do the testing of those two things together. Uh, again, I am not telling you that if you use a black diamond, your program is wrong. I am telling you, Every single time that you use a black diamond, you should have a very good reason to do that because you are making the testing and the integration more complex. If you can just use local variables, if you can use only association, that is always better. It's a better design and it's going to be easy to implement, easy to test. Use as an additional comment, but we're going to review this. Now, the final ones, inheritance is uh, realization. What is realization? Re 
Realization in a diagram is going to be something like a triangle in white with a line that is not solid. The first time that we have a line that is not solid. That is inheritance in particular. That is realization. What is realization? That is the equivalent in a source code of this keyword. In Java. When did you use implements in Java to do what? Inheritance. Inheritance of what? Yeah. This guy here. It's going to be an interface. UML, you represent an interface used like a class, but you can put the stereotype interface, the word interface with the angular brackets. Can you tell me one example of one interface in Java, in the libraries in Java? Any interface that exists in the Java API, any idea? Collection, runnable, something common? Clonable, serializable. I'm going to use that one. Just because I am sure that you know it from your 110 class, probably. Action listeners. All your listeners are interfaces uh, besides all the others that you mentioned. When you have an interface, you are going to do the implements in Java. Your class diagram is going to show this inheritance, but in a line that is not solid. Obviously, this one here, this one here should be a class. Whatever is the class. Ouch. Okay. Don't worry, you are going to use the actual listener in a project. Now, if I have a class. And I want to do inheritance. Something that I want to be sure is the solid line. The solid line represent what you have in Java as extends, in particular. In Java, public, the name. The name of the father or the name of the child? What is the first one that you put when you're creating a class and using extend? And which is the second one? Can we agree that here you put the child and here you put the parent? So in my example, uh, here I have a class W that is extending my class X. This is my example there. The parent, the second name in your extent is the one that have the triangle pointing to that, the parent. And the child is the one that have the line going out. Similar to the implements in the same rule, the line is solid, is extension between classes. Two classes, inheritance, interface and class, realization, inheritance, we can call it generalization or specialization, depending on what we read. Let me be clear. Class X is a generalization of class W. Class X is the parent of the class W. Parent, the one that is doing generalization. Class W is a child of class X. Class W is an specialization of class W. Child, specialization, parent, generalization. A specialization, generalization, both exist when you do inheritance. Both exist, use depending on what are you doing for the reading. What are you talking about? Creating a parent or creating a child? Going down, going up. And realization, when you do something between classes and interfaces, when you implement an interface. Uh, what if I have 
an interface. Uh, A. And I have another interface. B. Two interfaces. Uh, two things that I can create in Java as interfaces. Uh, can I use inheritance between two interfaces? Yes or no? Yes. So I can put one of them the parent and the other the child. Solid line or dash line? This one or this one? The question could be in Java, if you have two interfaces in order to make inheritance between them, you use implements or you use extend? Extend. So if the source code is extend, inheritance, solid line. Why? Because the dash line is used to represent that you are going to complete an interface. Remember, when you have an interface, you have methods without bodies. The class is going to provide bodies for the method. When you have this dash line, you are telling this class is going to complete that class. It's not really an inheritance. Inheritance in terms of getting something is more about, I am going to complete that one that is not complete. That is implement. That is the dash line. If you're doing inheritance between two things that are the same class, two classes, two interfaces, they are the same. They belong to the same category, solid line. The solid line tell me that both the parent and the child are classes or both the parent and the child are interfaces. Both are the same. Okay, so I have the example with class and class. I have the example with interface and class. Interface and interface. I am missing one example. What if I have here a class? Whatever. And what if I have here an interface? Can I do inheritance in which the parent is a class and the child is an interface? Yes or no? If you tell me yes, my next question is going to be, what is the line that I need to use, solid or not solid? If you want to say no, tell, say no. Okay, guys, can you do inheritance from a class? A class is the parent and the child is an interface. Yes or no, question in your quiz or exam. The answer should be That is not possible, right? You cannot do inheritance from a class as a parent and the child being an interface. Hopefully you know that. Uh, it could be crazy, right? I have this with bodies and here I am going to remove the bodies. Uh, okay. It is better if you say yes right now, like uh, brainstorming, just be sure that in the exam and in the quizzes, tell me no, put no. No partial credits. So this is not possible uh, when they are the same solid, when they are different, and the only possibility is the parent in the interface with dash line, realization, generalization, and specialization. Done. You know all the possible relationship between classes. Right? Questions so far? Nothing. Good. Perfect. So moving forward, testing. Uh, if I give you classes and person, student, professor, which are the relationships that you can use between these classes? Use guessing. What are common ideas for relationships here? 
And I know I am not giving you major detail of what is happening here, but just common sense, person, student, professor, if any problem or any project involve this, maybe Canvas, for instance, uh, I think there are particular relationships that you can immediately figure out. Okay, generalization, specialization, immediately, inheritance. Can you agree with me that basically talking about person, student, professor, what we are looking here is student and professor, both. They are a specialization of person. They are a special persons. They are persons with special things. So you represent that triangle pointing to the parent. The parent is the general one. The general one is person. They are going up. Any relationship between a student and professor? If you want to represent the relationship between a student and a professor, what could be the best line to represent the relationship? If they exist any. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, guys, association. The only possible relationship between an object student and an object professor could be an association, which basically means that one of them call a method in the other. Uh, maybe a student want to ask a question to the professor. So a student call a method in professor and where my question. I don't know, something like that. Maybe the professor give a grade to the student. Uh, that means that the professor call a method in a student, he did your grade. The grade is a parameter to one of the methods. The interaction between a student and professor should be association. Just like in the real life, calling a method, asking for some, asking something or answering something. Passing parameters, receiving back something. Association, good. Similar, using. If you're thinking about use, using, fine. Uh, what about having? What about a relationship in which you put a diamond here and connect with professor? I want to be clear, it's a common error in your exams. Can we agree that that is not true and the opposite either? I mean, you do not have a professor. You are in contact with a professor. You interact with a professor, but you do not have like having in your bag or something a professor there. And neither the professor have students there. We interact, we are associated, but having Having it like the car with the gene or the car with the wheels, that is having. The car has the wheels and the car cannot exist without the wheels. That kind of the relationship do not exist uh, between an object student and an object professor. Because the student do not have an attribute professor and professor do not have an attribute student. You do not have global variables of this type. Okay, good. Next. What about these classes? Uh, what if I give you student, professor, book, a course? There is any having here, any composition or aggregation that you can imagine between these classes that makes sense, obviously? Could you put some diamonds here? Can we agree that here, when we talk about a class, a course, uh, in terms of objects, what we want is this class is going to have attributes, variables that are going to be professor and students, maybe a collection of students, maybe one or two professors. So this class here is going to have diamonds, diamonds uh, having composition and association. We need to decide, but it's 
something like that. Tell me, white diamonds or black diamonds? Okay, now you get the idea, like, okay, having for sure, so I draw the diamonds, but now is, they can be null or not. And something that for sure cannot happen is, and well, let's play with that. If I want to, share the idea that a class cannot exist without a student and without professor and somehow makes sense is the diamond should be black. So I need to have there uh, always some value that is not null. Now, here, be careful because really, if we think about the system, this class 460 exists with null students and null professor in some point in the system. Think about it. Uh, someone, the department director, create a course with null professor. In some point, they hire me and they add the professor, but the students are null because this happened before you enroll. And in some point, the class is open with zero students. I mean, one of you found the class and so no one is enrolled yet. So if you think about that process, in some point, we really need this course to have null student and null professor. Later, it's going to move forward and later you are going to have a threshold of the minimum number of students. And if that threshold is not there, you kill the object, you kill the course. But the relationship, as a class, at least in the system in ASU, these diamonds both are white because the process that I described to you, the class, the course exists in some point without the students, in some point, even without the professor. Exactly. Well, uh, I think to be specific, uh, now that you mentioned this, in ASU, in the system, that you use, uh, professor is a black diamond, uh, sorry. And what they do is if the professor do not exist, they have this staff professor that is kind of the default one. So always, always, always a class have a professor, even though that one is this uh, dummy staff. So that could be the real system. However, students, they can be zero, they can be null. But just to give you the full picture. No, don't worry. Uh, always, 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 I am going to give you the domain, the specifics. So that part, uh, I am not making you guess. Uh, I am going to give you a very specific scenario and the answer is going to be one and only one. Here, I am reviewing possibilities. Good. They are going to be pretty obvious. So my goal is to evaluate your knowledge of the notation, not make you guess. Okay, so moving forward. Uh, oh. I was forgetting the book. Uh, any relationship, book, inheritance, association, composition, using, whatever. Student, aggregate book, a student. A student and book have some kind of relationship, right? Which one? You are students and probably you have a book around. What do you do with your book? You use the book using uh, is going to be a line with or without arrowhead. I really hope you put the arrowhead because if you do not put the arrowhead, you are telling me the student use the book, the book use the student. The student use the book. And we can play with, you know what, the professor is also using the book, but you know what, we have a library and library is really the owner of 
the book. So professor and students use the book, but the book is really in the library. Uh, the diamond is white because what well, the library could have the book or maybe not. What? You're sharing the story with the actors, the classes, and the correct relationship. But remember, this can be translated to source code. We're going to move to that. So easy one. Uh, company workers and tools. One more uh, relationship here. Company and worker is like university and professors using, having, inheritance. Could you agree with that? Can you agree with the black one? The company is still a company even though do not have workers. Not the ideal scenario, but could be. The worker and the tool. Makes sense, right? I mean, we read these names, we read these arrows and makes sense. What if I put a black diamond between worker and tool? Yeah. Can you agree with me that this black diamond between worker and tool is wrong? Because again, if I put this black diamond, I am telling that the worker cannot exist without the tool. And that is kind of a uh, very strong thing. The worker have never exist if the worker do not have a tool. Uh, that is not exactly true. Uh, answering the question in the in the chat, yeah, I mean we can talk about maybe course. Uh, our class have a textbook because we recommend a textbook. So if that is the case, we can also use a diamond with course and book. If that is something kind of mandatory for us, could apply, right? And it's why because some courses have a textbook that is mandatory for you to buy, others not, like this one is not mandatory for you to buy the book, so why the app? Yeah. yeah, I like that one. If you think about the company, the company can have like this, and you can think about the company have an inventory of tools. So really the company have the tools, this database of tools available, and also the company, they want to have this record of the employees, the workers. So the company have the workers and the tools. Just like you can think about university having professors and classrooms or computers. And the university borrow the classroom to a professor or even borrow a computer or a particular device to the professor. But the owner, the having it with the company or with the university so the company is the owner of both things and then one of them use the other but please this here this is wrong i just put that as an example like crazy things and again company is the owner but white the company still exists without any uh, people or tools hopefully good making sense right now this makes sense. I want to talk about our previous project. You have the requirements for this small project. You have the requirements for this game. So we understand what we want to do here. Before I start programming, what I want to know is which are the classes that I need in order to implement something like this. And I have a proposal for you. After you read your requirements, you create them. Can you agree with me that you need the classes that I am showing inside of these orange rectangles? Can you agree with me that probably we need a class for the Pac-Man, a class for the ghosts, a class for the power dots, 
a class for the labyrinth, the maze. And well, we need a class for the full game, for integrating everything together. Did you notice that we think about the classes that are the elements, the professor, the student, the tools, the Pac-Man, the ghost, the maze. And then we think about, okay, those small elements are going to be inside of or working with or connected to. And we also define those classes like here game or before university, company, whatever. Uh, the classes that are going to participate in the system, the actors inside of the computer. Five classes. Can I create the Pac-Man video game with these five classes? I am missing any class. You have the requirements. Anything that we define as a requirement, moving the Pac-Man, collisions, the enemy moving, the game, the score. Can we put all of that in these five classes? Five files. Yes or no? Hopefully you tell me yes. But because if you tell me no, I am going to ask what we are missing, right? Okay, now, the classes that I need to create, but also classes that I will need to use from some kind of library. Can you agree with me that we are going to create a video game, uh, a program in Java that is going to have a graphical user interface? And in order to create a graphical user interface, we need two classes from the library. Something that I am going to do is to put in different color, the names or the classes in the class diagrams that belong to the libraries. Uh, for those of you familiar with graphical user interface in Java, a particular with Trim, uh, in order to create a window, I need to use this class, JFrame. That is the class in Java that allows you to create windows a frame with the close, minimize, maximize element. Also, something that we want to do is to move the Pac-Man with the arrows. Uh, we need to read when the user press up, down, ref, like. In order to do that, we need a listener. We have action listeners to check for actions in the widgets, labels, bottoms, and so on. We have a key listener to check for actions in the keyboard. It's in the library. It's a class. It's going to be there. It's one of the classes that we are going to need. Makes sense, right? Now, we have the classes. The next step, connect the classes. What are going to be the connections between these classes? Do we are going to have the AMOS? Uh, are we going to have arrows? Maybe inheritance? Let's start for the easy one, the Amons. Do you think that someone here is going to be the owner of something? Which one of these looks like is going to have ownership of others? Okay, you have the idea. I think game is going to be like an important class. And that one is the one that probably is going to put together the game. And in order to put together the game, that one need to have a maze. A maze. Black or white, which basically mean in the source code, that one can be null or not. And hopefully you agree with me, the Pac-Man video game without the maze probably is not a Pac-Man video game. So what about the Pac-Man? Uh, Pac-Man video game without the Pac-Man. What about the ghost? It's not 
only about the picture is the instructions for the programmer. Programmer, I am giving you a diagram. There are black diamonds, and you should know that the black diamonds is these objects cannot be null, should exist from the beginning. When I create a game, you should create a maze, the ghost, and the Pac-Man, mandatory. It's part of the blueprints. Now, moving forward, uh, I am going to complete the second part, but someone mentioned, yeah, game. The one that is going to have all these elements, uh, that guy is a specialization. That guy, the game, is a window, a window with all these elements. Is a specialization of J frame. Uh, can you agree with me that something that I need to do is inheritance from J frame? It's a class, J frame. Game is going to be a class. I am going to do the inheritance because I need the window, the window inside of which I am going to put all the elements. The maze, the Pac-Man, and so on, in editing. Tricky question. Key listener. The key listener is an interface. The key listener is the one that is going to allow me to move the Pac-Man. What will you do? Connect key listener with which class? Okay, let me do this uh, multiple choice question. Should I connect key listener with Pac-Man or with game? Okay. In the chat, I have some uh, Pac-Man recommendations. Now you change game, yeah. And you should be thinking like, why with game? I mean, the one that need information is Pac-Man, but you're connecting this with game? Like, why? The reason is very simple. Game is the owner of the Pac-Man. Game have Pac-Man. We put before the diamond and connect the Pac-Man. The object Pac-Man is going to be created by the class game. When we connect the listener with game, the information about the keyboard is going to be notified to the class game. And the class game can communicate that information with the Pac-Man. And also game is going to do another things like exactly. Here, the point is, I do not want the Pac-Man to move just because the arrows. But what happens if the arrows is moving up, but the game detect a collision? It's like the game is the one that is going to receive the information about the arrows, but the game needs to do something like validate that the next position is available, or the Pac-Man is still alive, or whatever. Something is going to happen in game. And after that something, game is going to tell the Pac-Man, Pac-Man, now you can move to this position. That is the reason because we connect the implementation, the listener, with game, not with the Pac-Man. Think about this. The Pac-Man is not going to do anything unless game allow him to do that because Pac-Man is like a tool and a worker. The worker is the important one, the one taking the decisions. And this Pac-Man is used a tool. It's going only to follow instructions. Good. So this is making sense. Now, I have a problem here. Um, you are not, you are going to notice that I am going to have the ammons here and I am going to have the ammons here. 
there is any way that we can do something about all these diamonds here? It's like a lot of connections. There is something in programming that we can use to have the same result because finally we need this. We need the game having the Pac-Man, we need the game having the gold, we need the game having the power dots. That is mandatory. But I have a problem with so many lines. Let me be clear, in a diagram, any diagram, when you have a lot of lines, it's going to be hard to read. And therefore it's going to be hard to program because each of these lines is something in your code. There is a better way to program this. Well, uh, you, yeah, you can put the lines together. I am talking more about a different approach. It's like, right now, what I have is this public class game. And what I have is attributes, the diamonds, uh, Pac-Man, Uh, ghost. Maze. Power dot. Whatever. That is what you have in the source code equivalent to the diagram that I show you. Is there anything that we can do to make this small? There is something common for the Pac-Man and the Ghost. There is something common for the Pac-Man, the Ghost, and the Power Dots in the example that I show you. Did you notice that in the example that I show you, the Power Dot, the Pac-Man, the Ghost, they are kind of the same. Different behavior, different movements. One zero movement, the other crazy movement, the other arrow movements. But they look like similar. Not only here, but also in the real game. They are kind of similar. Generalization, yes. When you have classes like what I have here right now, when you think about I have the ghost, the Pac-Man, the power dot, and they are kind of the same. A rectangle in yellow, a rectangle in red, crazy movement, a rectangle in white, no movement. They are kind of the child's. And what we can do is to put a common parent. And if we put a common parent, that can help us a lot. Generalization, found, put a common parent to something is one of the best things that you can do in programming. We're going to review why. A, a lot of the design patterns that we're going to review later, the key idea is a common parent. The common parent is the door that open the polymorphic behavior, and that is a key topic here. But common parents. We can put a common parent to these three classes. Um, a common parent. I am going to use this green box there. They are going to be something that can be draw, uh, drawable, but you can use a spear. The sprite if you want, similar idea, something that can be draw. The next programming assignment is going to be connected with what I am explaining right now. The only thing is I am going to move a little bit the requirements, but yes, the next programming assignment is for you to do something very similar to this, not exactly with the Pac-Man, but very similar. Uh, graphical user interfaces, a lot of classes, the connections, and some behavior that I am going to explain later. We add a new class, the parent. And you know what? Now, if this one is the parent, those are the child. What happens if now Ghost, Pac-Man, and Power Dot have a common parent? The important thing is that now I can say that game has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
Why? Because when I say that game has dragons, remember, polymorphic behavior. The green box can be replaced by the Pac-Man, the ghost, or the power dot, whatever I want. Game has drawable entities. Drawable entities can be any of those three. Makes sense. Uh, following with the same idea, the game have a maze. Same idea, the game is in editing from JFrame. The game is implementing the key listener. Good. What else? Uh, we're going to create a maze. The maze is going to be this draw with all the elements in the background. What we need to do in order to draw something in Java is to use a particular class. Anything that you draw in Java is draw inside of a panel. The panel is the minimum unit in which you can create a draw, a picture for something using Java. So we want to draw a maze. Maze should be a panel. The same idea with drawable. If we do drawable, a panel, automatically, Ghost, Pac-Man, and Power Dot are panels. And the panels can be added into frames. So the maze and all these elements can be added into game. Inheritance. One last problem. I need the ghost to move along. I need the ghost to be moved by the system. Remember the requirements? The Pac-Man is going to move with the keys. And that is already solved with the key listener. But I want the ghost to move every second or in some kind of period of time, moving in some way. What can I do in order to make the ghost move alone? Can you agree with me that we need another thread of the execution? Our program should have one thread that is taking care of the user and all the graphics, and another thread that need to work with moving the enemy, moving the ghost. Two ways to implement threads. Well, three. You can use Runable, the interface. We're going to work with that later. You can use the class thread, only the class thread. You can extend the class thread. And the easy one for now, you can use the class timer that is in the library. There is a class timer. There is a class that is going to trigger an action every period of time. Maybe we need a timer here. We need a timer and every time that this timer is triggered, we can move the ghost. Tell me, I am going to connect timer with which of my classes in this diagram. Which class need a timer? The goal is the timer is going to be moving the ghost in the same way that the keys move the pagman. Yes. Can you agree with that? Game is the one that needs the timer, not the ghost. In the same way that the Pac-Man is not the one using the listener. The game is using the listener. The game moves the Pac-Man. The game is the one moving the ghost. The game is the one that is going to use the listener.
do I need the timer as a global variable or as a local variable? It's a very open question, but I can tell you, you can have a timer as a local variable and make this work. And just because I can do that, I can have a timer as a local variable, the relationship between game and timer is going to be association, not composition, not aggregation. Just because I can make this work with that local variable. So because I do not need the global, it is not mandatory to have the timer global. The relationship can be used with one arrow. Remember, if you can avoid having the global variable, the better. It's going to be the, ca the case with timer. And the only thing that timer is going to do is to trigger an action listener, an event, and that event is going to tell game to move the ghost. So something that we're going to have later is a connection between game and the action listener also. And that is kind of the class diagram for our game. Hmm. Looks good. If this is the blueprint, my next movement is the source code. Source code. I am almost going to stop here, but I want to show you some ideas. Next class, we can talk about the details. What do you think about this green one being an interface? Good, but why to make an interface drawable? The answer, because I need that one just as a parent for this tree, but I do not want to allow objects of this class to be created. The only reason for this green one to exist is to be a parent, nothing else. And that is exactly the definition of an interface. I am going to have you to be the parent, to define a method, empty, that all the childs are going to have, but never, 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 I am going to need an object that is just drawable. Because what I need are the objects, Pac-Man, the power pills, and the ghost. And if you think about them, power dot, a constructor, and the method draw. Pac-Man, a constructor, the method draw, and method setters, the names are different, but they are setters for the variables that control the position of the Pac-Man. Ghost, initial values, draw. And the draw, you are going to notice uh, random movements. If you review the ghost, the Pac-Man and the dot, they are almost the same, very similar. There is nothing here about listeners, timers, or the complexity that basically we put in game. These guys, the only thing that they have is this draw method and variables. That's it, separation of concerns. But I am going to show you the source code for all of this next lecture. Remember, our goal is kind of a pac but this pac -Man. So nothing fancy. Good. Any question, guys? OK, see you next lecture. Don't forget the quiz. Thank you.